Just gotta go and get some milk. I'll be right back. Quick, let's get out of here. Quick. Oh, come on. Oh, I think it's fair to say. This is not going to be a quick escape. Hi, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome back. If you've been here before, I should tell you, you may at some point on this video and the next video see me walking like Gollum from Lord of the Rings or depending on your depiction, John Wayne Bobbitt. It's up to you, but there is a reason. You see, I've had a bit of a nasty accident this week, to be fair. And before you like start commenting and I'll oh, get well soon, oh bless you, all the rest of it, you know, it would be appreciated. But uh, yeah, I think I kind of deserve what I got. You see, being a parent's a wonderful thing. Watching your children evolve and grow and being able to teach them stuff academic and social wise and I figured I'd teach my son a social little trait this week he was playing on his Xbox with his mates and I snuck up behind him and I did what I could only describe as an egg-tastic silent but deadly the lay down for the five star gag was absolutely immense it was pure egg sandwich I kid you not but it backfired didn't it and not kind of backfired but it kind of backfired as I released I tweaked something near the bum, I'm not saying it was, but lower back, it may have been a nerve, it may have been a disc, but at that moment, kiddo jumped up, moved out of the stinking cloud, started laughing his head off, because I was now crippled on the floor in agonizing pain, but not only that, also choking on my own stinking cloud eggy sandwich smell. It weren't a good move, and I don't know if there's a moral to the story, but I have learned that I shall never be trying to lay a silent but deadly on anyone again. Fear not, I've got a cup of paracetamols and a chamomile tea bag, so I should be all right. More importantly, the sun's absolutely blazing today, so we've got to take the opportunity and get up to somewhere. I've got a wicked little spot and a load of funky things I want to try out. Check this out, I've got a couple of funky upgrades. I've got a bucket. Yeah, I can read, but only a little bit. And fear not, there's plenty of pictures in it. And, ho, 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 a new power station bad boy. So, after possibly one of the longest intros ever, Let's get on the road. Let's get up to somewhere funky. Let's go. Boom time! And as if by magic, or a 10 second transition, we're in the stick land. Honestly, I'm proper buzzing for this one. I feel like a giant sized electric air cleaner. Bringing back the old gags, you know, but honestly, I do. It's been a fantastic week. About 1,500 of you guys have joined the channel. Welcome to each and every one of you. And everything's just pushing forward and moving at a fast pace. And it's just absolutely fantastic. Although, I have just noticed. <laughs> I forgot to have a shave, didn't I? And all the blonde bits are coming through again, which is weird for this time of year. And I should say, all in all, I've probably got that like wild man of Borneo look coming on. It's a bit gnarly. If I leave my beard and my hair to grow, I'm pretty sure I'd end up it all joining up and I'd have a whole head of hair. But more importantly, the book, I should have explained at the start, but it's a bit of a long intro. It's an Ethel's book. Here's the thing. All around the UK, there's kind of these things. In Scotland, you've got the Munro's, Peak District, Lake District, rather, you've got the Wainwrights, North Wales, you've got the Snowdonia 15 Peaks. And Peak Districts, it's got the Ethels. And it's also got a few others, but there's about 95 of them around the area. And I think what they are is like prominent hills. And here's the thing, last time I was up here, I wanted to hit one of them. There's a spot called Gun Hill, and I was looking at it over and over and trying to work out how to get to it. And there's nothing on any of the trail apps. When I got back to Leicester, I had a proper look and I realised it's one of the Ethels and managed to find a way to get to it. So I figured that's what we do today. Not only go and check it out, tick off the Ethels, but make our own trail on the All Trails app, because you can do it. And then push it out for other people to use and follow at a later date. On top of that, all my days, I probably got, I'm not lying, one of the best meals or the most funkiest meals I'm ever gonna cook in the crib. I'm so stoked about this. I'll keep it a surprise, but yeah. More importantly, we're about five miles from the spot and about 10, 15 minutes, so let's get ourselves over there. This one's gonna be a good one, man. And hopefully, we're gonna have the weather to hold out for it. Ah, 
sneaky bit of Bumble Flow single track. We've arrived, we've landed. <laughs> Happy days, mate. Oh, it feels good to have the exhaust fixed, though, I'm not gonna lie. She has started getting a little bit fruity again already, but we'll deal with that when we have to. For now, she's good to go. Right, off and off. Ah, oh, wicked mate, what a spot. Just on the outskirts of May, but this one. Right, oh, I'm gonna have to get all my bits together, but I forgot to charge a drone. I wanna kinda get some shots, so let me just jump in the back quickly and show you this power unit. Boom time, the EcoFlow River Pro 2. And I gotta tell you, when EcoFlow first contacted me about this, I was scratching my head a little bit. If you're a regular to the series, you'll know I've got the blue air and I was thinking, well, do I really need it? But two things, on a consumer side, you, if you're in the market for buying one of these, I thought it's only fair to show you what's available and choice is key. But for me personally, there's a few funky features on this and a few tasty little upgrades that I figured made it well worth me taking a proper look at. Right, so let me rumble in and show you what it's got and then tell you a little bit more about it. You've got a USB-C port, 100 watt or fast charger, three USB-A ports, standard 12 volt cigarette lighter port. You've also got your DC ports that are not so much used these days, but odd cameras have them and whatnot. And they're not one, two, but three 240 AC sockets, pretty impressed with that. The dial, oh yeah, like people like, you've got a percentage on it. And this 99 here, when I plug it in, that's gonna tell me how long it's gonna take to recharge. You've got your input and output power ratings as well. Right, so a little bit more about it. Look, if this would have been the Range 1 or the original series, I wouldn't have taken it for the simple reason they used to use a standard lithium battery. They've upped the game and they've listened to the consumers and what's going on in the market. And this now has a life PO4 battery. What does that mean? Well, instead of being able to recharge it 500 times, you can now recharge this thing 3,000 times before it starts to depreciate at all. In terms of like time, you imagine if you recharge this once a day, five days a week, you're looking at 10 years. It's so good, it really is with these Life PO4 batteries now. On top of that, the BMS system, the battery management system that comes with it is top notch. These sockets or this unit will output at 800 watts, but it's got like an X boost, which will allow you to plug in appliances up to 1600 watts. And EcoFlow are so chuffed with their BMS and the lithium battery that they're giving a five year warranty on this thing. They really think it's gonna last and it will. That's the beauty of this thing with the Life PO4 battery. Like you can use it for a few years, stick it in the cupboard for a few years, pull it out again in five years time and still be good to go with it really is impressive on top of that the selling point for this and for me really was what they've implemented into it a super fast charger from an ac outlet this will recharge to 700 watts hours worth of power in only one hour seriously zero to 100 percent in one hour you know most of the other units on the market take about four hours to do that and you've got to think like if you're in a rush to get out and go and you're loading up the crib and you forgot to charge it you've only got to wait an hour it takes me an hour to load the car up before i go so that'll be ready to go instead of waiting four hours absolutely brilliant on top of that which seems to be becoming the new thing on the market for these power units now it's got a little app that you can link up to it with bluetooth and wi-fi and check on it while you're away from the unit and minimum like sort of pieces of control with it which is it's pretty good to be fair and it's a nice little add-on right enough about this unit let me get the drone charged up and we can get on the trail let's do this well there's a little bit of wind today which means oh yeah we're gonna have to use the big muff again but here's the thing i'm not overly impressed with it hang on a minute i think i'll put my trousers on back to front Oh, mate, I was trying to get my hand in my pocket and it was the wrong way around. Do you think anyone will notice? Oh, frigate, there's no one around. It feels a bit odd. I don't know. Anyway, the muff, yes, look, here's the thing with it. I'm not impressed. You see, like I said in the previous videos, there might have been all the rage in the 1970s, but these days, uh, I don't think they are. 
On a serious level, there would be a good mic. It's a road mic with a huge muff, but for me, it's a bit of an issue. They're a directional mic. So if you're not standing right in front of it, it doesn't really pick you up well. And if I talk behind the camera, <laughs> it is nothing. And on top of that, when I get back home with the editor, the old GoPro sound levels were nice and uniform sort of across the level. This thing looks like it's been taking radiation readings in bleeding Chernobyl. It's just up and down like a madman. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think for extreme wind circumstances, it'll be all right, but I think a lavier or whatever you call them and a wireless one's the way to go, but you know, that's some serious like gourmet cheese going on there. Right, anyway, I'm not changing my trousers. We ain't got time, let's go. Yep. Definitely needs a battery. I don't know, maybe I need to stand further away from it. Sometimes it works, but uh, I've got to say, I feel a little bit like the crisscross appreciation society at the minute, wearing my trousers back to front. Remember them ones? Those two little funky gangster kids that were in the pop band that used to wear the trousers back to front. Yeah, it's not by choice, it was a mistake. <laughs> anyway, the app. Oh, wait, I can't move. We've got to set the point where we start, you know. Right, I think to be fair, it's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> let's hope so, because <laughs> there's a few other simple things around here. Um, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's it. Right, so I think we just track. Hang on a minute, what the friggle? Mate, apparently I've been doing a trail for the past 40 hours. Somebody tells me that's gone wrong. Bear with me a sec. But anyway, look, <laughs> we're back on it. Uh, yeah, tracking, you just got to press start. And then, what does that say? Low power mode, battery optimal. Oh, crying out loud. Hang on a minute. Mission off. Come back again. We're game on. With 15 seconds. Right, let's get a good time, see if we can smash it. <laughs> In all seriousness, I think all I do now is I walk up there, I walk back, and then I press stop, and then I can put all the details in for what the trail's all about. So yeah, wicked man, let's, uh, let's get up there. And I've heard rumors, just bumped into someone. I think this is a trigger. Oh, my days. This day just gets better and better. Let's go. <laughs> Nightmare. I was just thinking I'm going to be setting a fast pace. I can't even stand up straight, man. I don't know what I've done. Whether it's a nerve or a trap disc or some or slip disc or some I'm not sure. But you got to push on, ain't you? I mean, I have for the YouTube. But I don't care. I really have. It's like you have got to push on, man. Because realistically, oh, jeez, it's boggy. Oh, wait. Realistically, I'm not going to be able to do this forever, am I? I'm not getting any younger, you know what I mean? And at some point, I won't be able to do it. So, try and do as much of it now, while I can do it. As long as it's not all in boggy fields, damn it. I was, I was pausing by this gate, mate. Of high hopes, it's been a good day so far. Crap, I can't unlock it. Oh, freaking hell, the gate's towny proof I can't work it out. And, oh, no, no squeak. Oh, crikey. Oh, well, we'll get some more. We'll get some more. Oh, wicked man. Look, check it out. It's actually called Gun Moor. It's another tidy little spot, man. All like bird life and whatnot, you know. Rarities. Probably some magic mushrooms up here and bits, you know. Not that that's my thing, but. <laughs> Where was it a couple of episodes ago? And there was like quite a few people mentioned large mushrooms. And I was like, yeah. We did see some, we saw a load of fly Garrick and there's a load of sheep around there munching around it. Pretty mad, man. I've said before on the channel, I wouldn't mind doing a bit of foraging, but I've got to be honest, I think I'd steer well clear of the mushrooms. Onto the gun moor then. And uh, yeah, all sort of mad bird life around here, wild birds and such. Pretty little nice area. There's loads of them in the Peak District, isn't there? These little moors. And from what I've heard from people that know, Certain birds are in certain areas, and there is some real rare birds around here, I think. Like I said before, I'm not a bird affectionado, you know. I'm going the right way here. It's a bit of a boggy trail, and yeah, I've not checked an app or anything. I've sort of like got it in memory from when I was looking last night, but to be fair, it's not a bad little area for a bumble round, is it? Hang on a minute. I hope that's not it. No, I'm sure it's bigger than that. You could see it on Google Earth. It was like some obelisk kind of a uh, triggy spot at the top. So, and I've not walked 500 meters yet. Still, let's 
tricky game. Oh, mate. I'm eyeballing a little tricky. Oh, yes, baby. Let's go. Not gonna lie, pretty chuffed with myself for finding this one. A little bit of slap and a sneaky tickle. Wicked, mate. First effort, and it's got a triggy as well. And even though we've got a massive helicopter van, because you probably won't hear much of it because it's a directional mic, there it is. There's also a wicked, wicked view, man. Oh, my days. Spot on. Absolutely lush. We've still got the light as well. Bit of cloud coming. Probably bringing that storm. A few hours to go on that, but wicked, man. Right. I know it's not been the longest hike ever. I have got some other spots to check out. Run through this trail off, this app thing. So we'll get back down to the motor and then we'll take it from there. Let's go. See how this uh, app thing works. So it looks like we're back at the spot. I guess I can pause it. Uh, I don't want to hold it. It's done. Yeah, pause. Hold to pause. Okay, finish. How was the? Uh, how was it out there? Three stars. Let's add some photos. Ah, uh, poo. Um, bear with. Yeah, kind of forgot that bit. Next, name your activity. Ooh, right. I'm gonna call it. Ethel's Gun Hill. You'll do. Next. Should have us know about the trail. Little bugger. Short jaunt. Good parking for four vehicles. Four cars. That's stop. Awesome. Finish. High five. You did it. Bro, check that out. Look at that. It's even got me a little picture. Ethel's Gun Hill. Three stars. Maybe I should have gave it more. But there we go. Ah, oh, mate. Go check it out. It's on there. <coughs> right. The next spot then. Good news. It's only four minutes around the corner. I thought it was miles away. Wicked. It's a little spot called the Hen Cloud. We've never been there before. And there should be a park up there good enough for setting up the meal for this evening. So, yeah. Let's get ourselves over there. Right. I think this is the spot. And I'm not going to lie. I think this is the spot for the night as well, so uh, let's get a good one, make it comfy with a view, you know. Legend, mate. This will do it, right on the end. Okay, look, I hold my hands up, here's the thing. Some of you all know already, we're back up near the Voaches, and the reason is, I've still not found my mojo. That other week, it really threw me out of sorts, and I'm still not feeling great, and I guess that's what it's all about, isn't it, with the car camping and doing stuff, you know. Feeling out of sorts, go for something comfortable. It's all about just getting out for the night, getting out in the countryside and having some you time and just enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? Why put yourself under pressure and stress when you're out to enjoy yourself? Because there is a few other spots around here that I could have chose that we've not stayed at. But to be fair, they're a little bit isolated. And don't get me wrong. The next trip in a few days' time, I'm going to be heading somewhere that we've never been to before. So it's going to be epic. But just for tonight, I think we would have a nice one, man. I'm going to put a nice bit of feed on, have a little bumble up the hill, and then chill for the evening. And I've got a phone signal here. So, yeah, let's get this scran on. Oh, mate. I, oh, you're going to love this. Oh. 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 Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. I'm not going to lie, that table doesn't get any lighter with age, you know. <laughs> it's raised a ton, but it is pucker. It was a proper good find from one of my old gigs when I was driving the Forkies, you know, you know. It was on the top of a pallet and uh, ended up in the back of my motor. Fear not, I did ask. I'll tell you what, I hope we've got a main ingredient under here, otherwise we're in right trouble. Uh, I don't think that'll be enough on its own. Hang on. Oh yeah, I forgot so much stuff on this trip. I forgot to fill the water up. We're good. I'll tell you what, oh, it's a good job with this air. I'm not going out in public in it and I'm just in the back of the car on my own. You look a lot muppet if everyone saw you with air like this. Anyway, the food. Not a particularly exciting start, I'll hold my hands up. It starts with boiling a ton of water. I think I'm probably gonna need two kettles worth as well. I'll tell you what else I've not checked as well. <laughs> that I've got any more gas. Nightmare. Oh, I might be drinking cold tea tonight if I ain't got no more gas. Good job we're not cooking with gas. Oh, yes. 
because we're cooking with this bad boy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need power, bear with. Ugh, which is the main reason, to be fair, I brought the eco flow, mate. It's gonna be wicked. I'm gonna be able to like do a stew. Hopefully, it should take about three hours and it's gonna be powered by that little bad boy. I've tested it out at home already and it worked. Now I'm doing it in the back of a car in the middle of the Peak District in nowhere. Yeah, this should be safe, wouldn't it? Good news though, apart from boiling water, there's next to no prep. I found it in Idlaw. It's a whole like, damn it, I thought it was beef, it's pork. Ah, oh, crap. Oh well, yeah, pork casserole then. Um, and it even comes with the gravy. So yeah, even I might not be out buying this one. But I might buy the car down, we'll see. Damn it, I know it's in here somewhere. Oh, man, come on, where are you? Oh, the, yeah, I'll need that, that's the lid. Oh, yes. The piece de resistance. Oh, dumplings, mate, suet. I mean, you can't have a casserole without some dumplings, can you? So, come on, water. Boil, this is supposed to be quick. What, not gonna lie, feeling a little bit VIP with this one. It comes in separate packets, look. Separate vegetables, separate gravy, and then, yeah, you gotta get your paws all over the rusty meat. No other, but yeah, good one. Right, kettle's boiled, so I assume is all I need to do. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Don't taste good cold. I don't know, what you reckon? Water first and then that, and then stir it. That's what I'm thinking. What I'll do, I'll shove it all in, and then if I need more, I can add more. That's genius. Man, where's my wooden spoon? Somebody stole my wooden spoon, man. Ah, nightmare. Right, I don't know where the wooden spoon's gone. Looks like someone's half inched it, but uh, yeah, in with the gubbins and everything, I think. In with the beef, uh, pork, you know. Whoa, Jesus. Mate, it's looking pretty good already. And it's not even started. Mmm, them veggies smell good. Man, they've got spuds in there and all. Oh, I didn't even know. What an absolute ledge. Right, that's supposed to take about three hours, so let's plug the little bad boy in. Turn her on. Uh, <laughs> mate, this thing went charged this morning when I left. I was spitting feathers out to plug it in for 20 minutes. And it was on 100% in like 20 minutes. Wicked, wicked, wild, wild. Right, anyway. Uh, yeah, turn that on. Boom time. Check what power's sucking off. Oh, we ain't turned it on yet. Is that hot? I ain't got my glasses. What the hell does that one say? Oh, mate, it's all rubbed off. I think it says warm. I think that's the one we want it on. I think we want it on high. Let's get high. And then, uh, like, sucky bomb 37. Right, hang on. Do your thing. Yeah. Right, in all seriousness, that is going to take about three hours. We've possibly got 45 minutes worth of light left. So, I don't know. We'll just go for a little wonder and see what happens. I don't honestly want to leave this on its own too long. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man, check that out. That's so cool. Oh, don't lock my keys in the car again. Crap. I did it the other day. Honestly, absolutely gutted. I was out up at some country park in Leicester and uh, yeah, I opened the boot up, was doing some bits, put the keys on the bed, shut the boot, went to grab the keys out of my pocket and yeah, the freaking thing had locked itself. Man, I spent like an hour and a half waiting for the AA to come and rescue me. Took the dude two minutes to get in. Like he was twocking a car or something, it was hysterical. Ah, wicked man proper losing the light but it's a nice area i really don't know how much you guys will see of it but little Meerbrook lake down the way where we were earlier it's roses all around and i think right above me is the hen cloud apparently we follow this trail cuts around and then i can oh no the guy said scramble to the top freaking hey we're more back nightmare have a look. I'll tell you what, I was on about stopping somewhere with no one around tonight. There's no one around. <laughs> There's absolutely no one around. Check it out. All the way up to the roaches. No one parked up there overnight. No one down near I, where I am. Just me, man. On me toddler. Pretty sweet. And in a kosher spot, so even sweeter, you know what I mean? Right, I think that is it, the hen cloud. I think I can sort of skedaddle around this pathway and then it's slowly going to meander up to it, so yeah. Probably not going to get any views from the top, but we're a nice spot for a cup of tea while we wait for the munch. Let's go. Losing the light. Jizzle's coming down a little bit. Can't really see where I'm going. Loving it, mate. Loving it. It's 
it's been a good week this week with the YouTube and everything surrounding it. Real positive vibe, real positive moves. And to polish it off with a little trip, a couple of days up in the peaks. Yeah, icing on the cake, mate. Right, I'm the blue dot. I think if I follow this white one, I can get a yellow one and then somehow that'll bring me up there. Mate, this is well dodgy. I don't know what I'm doing. Look, it's pitch black. I should be heading back. But where's the fun in that? I don't know. I don't know. We'll take a look at it. We'll have a little wonder and see what happens. You're not going to see though, anyway. <laughs> There's madness prevailing. We're going for it. We're having it large. Oh, madness. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't even get through the gate. Man, I don't know how much you're seeing this with the light, but it's a proper rocky trail here. Man, I'm guessing you're seeing nothing about now, but I've got to follow a proper rocky trail. And that's going to take me to the top of this sort of crop. And I think that's the hen cloud. Whew, sweat me chunger off, mate. It's cold. It's late November. Oh, loving it. Let's go. Let's go. Get to the top, man. Oh, wow. This is mad. You guys are going to see absolutely nothing. But I'm standing on a really precarious rocky top at the minute with a big old drop. We're on the top of the hen cloud. And whoa, 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 I can actually see where the cars park. So... In terms of the trail up I'm following though, I'm in no man's land, so I think I'm going to take five up here and then head back to the crib slowly and safely. I think I've got a head torch in my bag, I just hope I've charged it, so yeah, I'll see you there. <laughs> oh, level 50 on Candy Crush! <sighs> Legend. Right, I'm not going to lie. We may have a bit of a problem with this uh, amazing meal. But fear not, I'm concocting a cunning plan. Thing is, oh mate, it's been going four hours and it's still raw. <sighs> like, even the vegetables are raw. So, the thing is, there's some potatoes in there as well. I can eat raw-ish vegetables, that's not too big a deal. But I can't eat raw meat. So, I'm going to have to fish out all the meat and I think I'm going to try and fry it off and then put it back in. Just to make sure the meat's cooked. This is going to be a bloody nightmare. Nightmare. I'll be eating at like four in the morning if I leave it another three, well, maybe two in the morning if I leave it another four hours. <sighs> i got to do it. Holy crap. If ever there was a disaster about set to happen in my crib, yeah, this is it. But look, with the electrics and everything, I've had no choice. I've had to drain everything because there's remnants of meat in the bottom. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And... Look, the meat, it just, it's, it's not cooked. It's definitely not cooked, so, yeah. Oh, give me a minute. <laughs> I need to sort this out. <laughs> careful there, really careful. Oh. Right, that's clean. <laughs> oh, mate, I've got a video of this because this has a total recipe for disaster. In with bowl one, Aye, and in with bowl two. Man, I hope there's no meat bits in there. Really worried, like, even about the littlest of bits. Make me really ill, man. Right, now is all I need to do is separate the meaty bits from the veg. Ah, damn it. Ah, oh, mate. Right, the, the, the meat's ready to fry, but I thought I'd try and do the bloody dumplings, didn't I? Mate, it's not gone well. I'm, I'm not going to lie. They're all, like, lumpy as summer, and then I've spilt loads of this powder on the floor, and I just can't get them right. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And maybe just a bit more powder then. Ah, genius. I've nearly used the old bloody bag. Man, it's difficult to get the consistency right in the back of the car, you know what I mean? Not lying. Yeah, man, I think that's good. That looks doable, doesn't it? Look. Wicked, mate. Who said I couldn't do it? Right, I just want balls, you do. Know. One there. In there. You ain't gonna cook properly anyway, let's be honest. What? One hour later. I think I'm ready to do the meat bit. Damn! This is a proper mission. And I'm really not sure if them things in there are going to cook. Like, probably any of it. But especially them dumplings. <laughs> but I was just thinking, check it out. We're in the back of the motor. Jamie Oliver, take heed. You don't need a 100-foot kitchen, do you, mate? Look, this is what you need. You need about six foot. <laughs> or or two foot. <laughs> Yeah, he probably makes better food than me. I'll give him that. Right, good news. Pork's cooked. Admittedly, we may be doing a stew with crispy pork, but at least we know later that it's the dumplings we're throwing up and not the meat. You know what I mean? Oh, most of it went in there. 
for a change. Right, those dumplings, wow. Wow. <laughs> they're turning into a goo, they're not cooking. What's that about? Right, I think that's got about 20 minutes to go. Brace yourselves, oh my goodness. Let me show you the mess. That's after about oh, five and a half hours. Three hours on good heat, and then uh, two hours doing its thing on low heat. And yes, I know what I did wrong, don't I? Because I called me dad. I should have cooked the meat first. I should have fried it off, shouldn't I? And now it's an absolute mess. I don't know if it's going to be edible because I put raw meat in there without water. It, it didn't boil up, but it went up to temperature on like this thing, you know what I mean, for about three hours. The vegetables are nearly cooked, but still partially raw. And the dumplings, well, they're just a mess. I don't know what they are. Slowly pick my way through that and see if there's any bits that are actually cooked and hope for the best. It's like half ten nearly at night now. There's no way I'm cooking another meal now. It's well too late. I'm knackered. Hey, disaster. Still, on the bright side, at least I know what I did wrong. <laughs> so next time I attempt it, I'll be able to get it right. Well, truth be known, I didn't pick through all that stew. I couldn't, I started picking through it and some of the meat tasted raw. All the vegetables were still raw. They were like half cooked. I just didn't want to risk it. I've <sighs> drained it all away and put it all in a carrier bag and I've had a couple of bowls of cereals instead. Good man. I should have pre-cooked it before. It would have been all right cooking it with that eco flow. It had enough power for it, but not the way I did it. Talking of power, I should say, EcoFlow sent me an absolutely spanking looking solar panel. I'm gonna get my head down and I'll catch you in the morning, but check this out. Right, look, I've gotta say before I start with this thing, seriously, like Elon would be quaking in his boots about this bad boy. It's like a Batman villain on overdrive. Check it out, Two-Face. Oh yeah, you know, they call it a bifacial solar panel. It's got your monocrystalline cells in standard for solar panels throughout the marketplace and also happy days for UK. It's an MPPT panel so it's going to get sun and energy from anywhere and any angle like within cloud or sunshine, fear not. But what sort of coating's it got? Ah, huh? well, it hasn't got a coating has it and that's not a bad thing because this little bad boy is tempered glass. All day long, shocks, hits and scratches it's gonna take it because it's hardcore but talking of hardcore check this out ip68 waterproofness honestly the dudes at ecoflow gone mental with this thing i read a thing where they dunked it underwater in a pool of water for two days long to check that it was waterproof and what does that mean hey we live in europe man it rains all the time one minute it's sunshine one minute it's persisting it down with rain and the beauty of that is you can just leave it out all day long sun or rain and put the thing away when you're ready to put it away. Well impressed. But talking to the bar facing and all that, here's a wicked little stat that I'll throw on the screen. This thing's supposed to be like 25% efficiency from this, but what I did like about it is, it doesn't matter what surface you put it on, with the sun or the light rays that's bouncing back off the ground that you've got it on, it's bouncing back onto this. So something like cement today, you're getting an extra 10% from that, as well as your front panel. But Proof's in the pudding. It's a pretty cloudy, grim day. Let's see what she's packing on the power unit. Okay, look, different day, different location, but the sun's actually out today, so let's see what we're packing. Right, all my days. We're packing, I really hope you can see that, damn it. It's like 150s. Right, let's see what the Blue Eddie's packing. Just out of curiosity, in comparison, and we're packing 82s, I don't know if you can see that, I really do apologise, but yeah, 70s, 79s, 80s, 82s, no way! That bifacial solar panel's rocking about 35% more than the Blue Eti or the Blue T. Wow, I've got to be honest, that's really, really impressive. I should say it's a little bit more finicky to set up than the Blue Eti, but I think you're getting value for setup with another 35% power worth. I'll tell you what I will do now, because I've got all of this set up and I've got them both out. I think we'll do a side, con side comparison from the Blue T and the power unit of the EcoFlow. So let's do that. Boom time then. Look, I'm not going to go over these too much because we've covered all the specs on various parts of videos. In the blue corner, rocking out with two 240 sockets as opposed to the red corners three sockets and on the red corner side we've got one USB-C port as opposed to two USB ports on the Blue Eti which has also got two standard USB ports as opposed to the 
EcoFlows 3. Display wise, well, you know, it is what it is. We've got bars on the uh, original range of Blue Eti with all your gubbins. Display wise on the EcoFlow, the much preferred percentage mark, I can't deny. Obviously both are rocking the 12 volt cigarette lighter socket for most of your in-car appliances, to be honest. Extras, I've got to say with Blue Eti, you are looking at getting a light. How much you use that is debatable. And you also have got a wireless 15, which isn't massive, watt charger on there, which will suck a bit of juice into your phone. They aren't available on the EcoFlow. There is no light and there is no wireless charger, but what you're getting with the EcoFlow, I've got to tell you, the fact that you can charge this up in an hour is just absolutely immense. And I've got to say, after testing it out and putting it through its runnings, this is a proper solid unit. It's a perfect solution for your outdoor use, be it van life, car camping, motor homing, or standard camping on the campsite, take it with you, you know. And a possible solution for a UPS device for certain things in the home. I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and check it out and pick up your River 2 in time for Christmas or winter. Should also add actually that this River 2 Pro isn't currently available. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is the last one in the UK that I've got my sticky paws on. It's going to be available online in January. So the links in the description will be for the solar panels and the River Max, which is also in the range, same range with all the same features. Of course, you've always got the deltas and everything else from EcoFlow as well, encompassing the same technology. So as I say, hit the link, go check them out. Ah, uh, morning. First coffee of the day then, and as always, it's not even touching the side. Slept like a corpse, you know, you know. I did actually wake up at seven o'clock, but it was persisting it down the rain, so I just didn't want to get out of bed. But here's the thing, even though it's raining, I think it'd be nice to not end this episode in the crib, and I think it'd be only honorable to take you to the top of Hen Cloud, because you didn't see it last night, and even with a cloudy day today, it's still gonna be nice at the top. So I'm gonna get my shizzing it together, and I'll meet you at the top. Okay, we're not at the top, I'm still wandering up. In fact, why don't you just left the crib? Look, it's weather, man. I can't believe it. It's a nightmare. It's raining and it's grey, rah, 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 yeah, but when my first alarm went off at seven o'clock this morning in the crib, we could hear the rain and it sounds really, really heavy. So it's like, it's not worth getting up for. I'm not going to go out in it, is it? And now I'm up, I realise it's just a bit of drizzle. It's a nightmare. I really should stick my head out the window in the morning and have a proper look at it. But, mate, look at this. Hen clouds looking proper wicked and ominous, man. That looks epic. But here's the thing, and why I'm having a waffle now, not at the top, because I was having a look on the GoFundMe page that I've set up for getting the second crib together. It's on Buy Me A Coffee, and I say, like, if you go on there and you want to give a donation towards it, go on Buy Me A Coffee and then go to the wish list. Because I've noticed everybody that's donating is giving donations of five pound denominations. You can give a pound if you'd like, but you need to go onto the wish list actual page and then scroll down to the bottom and then you can choose the amount that you'd like to donate. So yeah, just a bit of an heads up on that. I've noticed everyone was giving fibers and I should say, and I will say, wow, massive, massive thank you to each and everyone that's donated already. We're almost, at a quarter of the way to the actual total after two days so absolutely amazing it's gonna be wicked mate it's gonna be wicked plans are popping through me head left right and center for the build it's gonna be sick right trying to get up that hill's gonna be a bit sick with me back let's go okay i'm not at the top yet i can't resist it mate i'm buzzing man it's marsh from here to here look at the day it's bleak it's grim it's gray it's raining it's freaking awesome man it's midweek and there's no one here just me i love it man i'm so blessed <sighs> out in nature doing my thing you know? and listen look i don't want to stand here and tell anybody what to do it's not my thing we all live our own lives we all do our own thing but i know I'm aware that my videos and giggles and misadventures help people out a little bit. And I say this, look, I get out in nature and it helps me a lot as well. And I'm not telling you what to do, but give it a go. If you're struggling a bit, however you're struggling, you know, just get out in nature for a bit. 
get away from it all try and put that shit back where you are living and whatnot spend some time a bit away from it it really helps me it really does anyway I've done this bumble bit before and it weren't last night I'm gonna take the shortcut let's have it large still not at the top well, I was just thinking again you know like I think that's what the shocker was with last week for me mostly it's like it's not that this is my safe space or anything but this is my space my time away from it all me alone in the wilds and somebody infringed on that you know what I mean sort of take away that specialness of it that I can get away from all the shit to my zone and when I'm in my zone it's all good because it's just about me in a non-selfish way and to have that bubble burst last week it's a bit of a shocker but you know what last night's done me proud man it really has feel good about staying there last night and I'm bit by bit getting my mojo back I can't wait for the next trip it's gonna be wicked planned already I'll tell you more later let's get to the top well I'm gonna hold my hands up we're not at the top it is just up there but well, I think this is gonna be a good spot to end it we've got the hen cloud massive right here check it out man there's some like real cool scrambling roots on this thing I won't mind a go at some point we're not in this type of weather though and that's the thing isn't it if we get to the top you want to see less than what we've got now whoa but it is a wicked little spot pure fog man kind of ominous kind of poignant for the moment but let's not get too deep i really really hope you enjoyed this one it's been good personal level finding my mojo a bit again and getting out that's for now really hope you enjoyed it did oh all the good stuff hit the like button subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely leave in the comments and as always you know you know take it easy enjoy the camp and stay stealthy all right